Did you know that pretty much all of the other VPN review channels on YouTube that rank in the results are voiced by the same person? Look no farther than Consumer Research Studios with this voice. Welcome back, and today I'm gonna to talk about NordVPN. Geek Man. Welcome back. So today I wanna to talk about some of the best v VPN discovery. Welcome back, and today I wanted to bring you guys a Cyber Geeks. Welcome back. So today I wanted to quickly show you guys how you VPN Ninja. Welcome back, and today I wanted to address this question, which is our free VPN. Panda Tech. Welcome back. Today I want to talk about some of the best free VPN. Masters of VPN. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you guys. Look at their analytics. We could see a total of 523 likes and zero comments with 1.8 thousand views. Well, at least in my opinion, that seems very legitimate. So if you're tired of seeing all of these reviews that just suck, stay tuned to Tom Spark Reviews, the only channel that does objective data-driven reviews sourced on VPN tier list with my objective rating table, data cataloging every single VPN. And no, I'm not on any other channel doing any other voiceovers. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another VPN review. Today we're going to be running Hide.me through an updated review for 2024. This video is sponsored by Incogni. Incogni is the best data broker removal tool on the market, hands down. You know those websites like White Pages and all those other ones that host your address, your phone number, and all that information about your family and friends? Well, if someone finds your IRL name, whether because you leaked it or someone found out, they could find this information on these websites and it could lead to you getting doxxed and harassed. That's why you need a data broker removal tool. What exactly does Incogni do? Well, basically it sends emails to websites on your behalf so you don't have to waste your time doing it. According to Incogni, I've saved over 123 hours sending emails so I can't be doxxed. In my comparisons, Incogni is the cheapest data broker you could find, but it also doesn't skimp on features and it has a lot of updates that come out every year. Recently, it's improved its user interface and added more data brokers that it will remove your information from. Use my link below to lock in the best price and let them know I sent you. All right, now back to the video. So let's get into it. Um, now, Hide.me is a very interesting VPN provider. Um, it's kind of like one of those VPNs that it comes so close to pretty much being the best, but there are six, some things that hold it back in my opinion and through my tests, of course, and kind of depending on where you are in the world as well and kind of what speeds you can get on and kind of the speeds you pay for your internet service provider. Um, so let's go ahead and discuss. Well, first of all, pricing is really good. Uh, Height.me is actually one of the most affordable VPNs. Um, it's around $70 for two years and three extra months, so 27 months, which is really good. 12 months is $60. One month is 10 bucks. Now, Height.me, kind of like an old VPN, we VPN that is now right out of business. It's kind of one of those VPNs that I feel like it's almost specifically kind of reworked its pricing system um, to kind of match what I think is affordable, which is pretty cool. Um, additionally, I think there's like a page where, um, I, I don't know where I found it, but I think I found it uh, down here, yes. So if you're on this specific pricing page, you gotta go to like pricing somewhere. Um, but if you go specifically up here to pricing instead of just the main page, it'll take you here. Um, and this is where you can scroll down and go here. And now if you click here, here, and here, you can even get more pricing plans, uh, which is really cool. So 36 months, you can get it for around $120, which is nice. Um, the six month plan, you could get it for, um, it's around $30, which is very affordable. And you can even get three months, which I guess would be around 15. And that's around 18, 19, $20, yeah. So pretty good as well. Um, I really like that. Um, in some ways, I kind of wish this was like a little bit more apparent. If you guys watch this review, the team, maybe put this up a little bit. Um, you know, maybe put that like right here. If you really want people to buy these plans, be like, hey, additional plans are available. Maybe there could be a second pricing page listing out some of these. I know you don't want to probably make the website too confusing with too many pricing plans. Uh, tour guard I could take a lesson from that for sure. Um, but outside of that, guys, the pricing being affordable, it's 10 simultaneous connections, um, which is really nice. It includes streaming compatibility. Um, really, I don't have any complaints with the pricing. It's pretty much perfect in my opinion. The free 30-day money-back guarantee. And they even have a free plan with limitations that you could test out too. 
um, but the paid plans are really probably what you're going to want to use. So really, no complaints there. Probably one of the best pricing systems from any VPN, hands down. Um, now we could talk about the application, and surprisingly, they actually uh, updated the application. This is the beta. I don't know if this is what it looks like in live, but I did want to try the beta just to have the review up to date to the most potential of what this VPN can offer. Um, and it looks pretty good now. Um, you can see here, you can change between light and dark very easily. Um, the application is designed a little differently than some VPNs out there. You have these tabs down here for your locations. Um, this will take you to kind of a more visual location. Um, and you have also some basic settings here that could quick toggle. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I almost feel like they could consolidate this one with this one somehow um, and maybe make like a little map that they could click on to take you here. I don't know if it needs a specific tab. Um, it also feels like there should be another box here. I'm not sure why. Um, just my personal feedback there. Um, if you want to navigate to the settings, you go to the top. It kind of took me a while to find this. In some ways, I kind of wish it was right here. I kept clicking on this down here, but it's like a support button. Um, maybe you could even put the settings here. So maybe put this, somehow integrate it there, and make the settings down there because I couldn't really find it up there for some time, although not a huge issue. You have all the available protocols, kill switches, and stuff like that, which is nice. Um, so you also have the advanced settings too, um, which you can customize with the custom DNS. Um, so that is very nice to see. Some VPNs don't give you that op um, option. We also have the ability to whitelist IPs and those kind of things. Um, so this is nice, allow local network connections. Um, so I think this can kind of help you with some local devices if it's interfering, so that is pretty cool. Um, overall, the application is very well done. Um, it does have sp split tunneling, I do believe. Um, here it says go to settings, split tunnel. So these are the old options. Um, we no longer seem to have split tunneling in this old way. Um, it might be in that new feature setting here. Uh, if I'm um, right here, there we go. So there it is. So I'm still kind of learning how to use this new app. Um, I did kind of give them feedback on the app saying, you know, the old app looked kind of outdated and kind of, and you know, it does look better now. If you compare the way it looks now to how it did, it does look a lot more modern. It has that nice dark mode. So I think they are heading in the right direction with it, but it's still clearly in beta a little bit. So it needs a little bit of fine tuning, I think, but they're clearly heading in the right direction, which I think is very good. It seems like they're taking feedback and kind of improving and iterating the application, which is good since a lot of VPNs on the channel like TorGuard and some other ones have kind of gotten stale in my opinion. So at least we have that from Hi.me. Um, now we could go into the next section. This is probably my least favorite thing about Hi.me is I just still don't get good speeds. I've told the team this and they said they were working on it, but still compared to other VPNs, we're getting much, much slower speeds. I'm not sure why. Now this might not be an issue if you're someone who has 100 megabits a second or 200 megabits a second or less, but anything above that seems to be capped out with Hi.me. I'm not sure why. As you can see, the speeds here just do not compare to other VPNs here on the channel. With other VPNs, Surf, Nord, TorGuard especially, I could get around six to 750 megabits per second almost. So this one is very, very slow for me, and I'm not sure why, but this alone means it's one of those VPNs I just can't use on a day-to-day -day basis. I've tested different servers, I've tested different settings, um, so we just can't get optimal speeds. This is one reason why I don't recommend this VPN as often as I might, and it's not a daily driver for me to use specifically, just because these speeds. But again, depending on where you're in the world, this might vary for you, or if you don't have the fastest internet connection, it might not cap out like I do. I've run a gig, so that's why I have that issue. Now we could go to the next section, uh, which is gonna be the privacy audit. Now, Hi.me is a very reputable company, a very reputable team, and they don't really have any issues from me. If we look at their website, you can see they have no trackers, no cookies, and these kind of things, so they're very privacy friendly. The Exodus tracking for Android is the same result. They have no trackers on Android. They are one of the first companies to do a no-log audit from Leon Joranic a long time ago. I think they actually kind of pioneered that kind of idea of more transparency. They have transparency reports every year, which is nice too. The only thing they don't have is a clear court precedent of refusing to give up logs on any users. This is not something that's necessarily bad. It just means it hasn't happened yet, unlike some other companies like TorGuard and OVPN, which have gone to court and refused to give up logs on users. So that's just something to think about. But overall, in terms of privacy, it's pretty much perfect in our tests here on the channel. As you can see on the website, they're not really collecting any data on their users which is what we want to see.
Now, in terms of the rest of the categories, really, I have no fault with the, the company itself. Customer support is excellent with pretty good response times and live chat. Um, they have never really come after me for criticizing their company, which is good. The streaming compatibility works really well. I have no issues with that either. And they've really done a good job updating their appearance, I think, and usability of the application, or at least are making very good strides to do so. So overall, guys, what is the final score here on the channel? Well, it's going to get a 78 um, out of 88. So it's a very good score. It's just behind Proton and TorGuard. Now, how could they improve? Well, if they got up to 600 megabytes a second, if they got those comparable speeds of some of these other VPNs, it'd get three points. And it would pretty much be right in the same realm as TorGuard and Proton. And I think it would deserve it. I think the application still needs some fine tuning. It's in beta still, so that's understandable. And I think they're making some good improvements with their product line. One other thing, though, with the application or the company itself is that they aren't really extending their peripheral offerings, which I think eventually could hurt their business. Um, a lot of these other VPNs, whether Proton, TorGuard, Nord, or Surfshark, are really kind of... Um, understanding that the marketplace is evolving, they're adding more value proposition to their products. Take example, Surfshark um, for around $100, $120 for two or three years, you could get some extended offerings, um, antivirus built in, um, incognito data removal. Uh, Nord is offering a password manager. So some of these things I do, do think add the value proposition. You know, you're going to be paying for a VPN or do you want some extra cool things? I think that is interesting to think about. And I think that's where the market is headed, especially with something like Proton offering email, drive support, password manager, and these kind of things. Now, they are more expensive, but I do think the value proposition is there. And I do think VPNs extending during services and adding more value is where we are headed. Um, and Hide.me doesn't really seem to be doing that just yet. They still seem to be perfecting their VPN, which is fine. But I do think some of these extra things, especially stuff like um, the Soxify proxy is a little wonky. Adding some uh, open source capability to their applications, dedicated IP, some of these things are missing. And still some of the things like, um, you know, having an antivirus built in or some cool password managers or some cool chat apps or something like that would add the value proposition. Um, just from just being a plain VPN. Since other VPNs are doing that, I think other VPNs are going to have to compete if they want to compete with the value proposition. That's just my opinion, though. Anyways, guys, if you like what you saw with Hi.me, click on the link in the description down below to check them out. I'm not sponsored by them, but it is an affiliate link, which means you can help support the channel at no extra cost to you if you like their product. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next VPN review very soon.